the wonderful sounds of the loon across a misty lake early in the morning. It brings uh, the evocative feeling of, of the North Country. And the question, of course, is what are these loons saying to one another? And can we understand anything about the meaning of these various calls? And that is a project uh, that we've been working on now for a number of years. And I've asked Jay Mager, a professor at Ohio Northern University, uh, to tell you a little bit about uh, the sounds they make and what we believe to be the meaning of those sounds. Uh, loons characteristically give um, three vocalizations that uh, are um, able to be communicated over long distance. Uh, the first is a wail, which is the haunting uh, call of the loon. And the whale has been long believed to be a contact call. That is a call that's often given by um, mates to find one another or perhaps mates looking for um, misplaced chicks. The tremolos are basically um, when loons are agitated. So it's believed to be uh, a signal given when they're threatened. As the yodel tends to be a call, it tends to be territorial in nature, that it's only given by males. And it's usually given in the context of when an intruder has flown into or is flying over the territory. After we return from the field, uh, having recorded the vocalizations of loons, in this case the yodel, uh, we put them on the computer in order to analyze them. And here uh, is an example of a, of a yodel. You'll notice that it has an introduction and then one, two, three, four, five repeat syllables uh, as we call them. Another way of looking at these is to make a different kind of diagram. Uh, this is called a sound, this is called a sound spectrogram. And what this is is a plot of time here and now frequency, very much like uh, musical notation where high pitch notes are at the top, uh, low pitch notes are at the bottom. And so what this then is a diagram of frequency versus time. And here's the introduction, here's a repeat note, and uh, so on. And so once again, let me play it and uh, you can follow along. By having these kinds of diagrams and these kinds of displays, one can use the computer to measure various aspects of the different yodels. For example, the four measurements that we have found very useful are the length of the duration of the introductory notes from here to here, the gap between the uh, introduction and the first repeat syllable, and the pitch of this note of the introduction and of this note of the introduction. And with those four measurements, we are able to identify individual loons. And it turns out that individual loons differ in those four aspects. And so uh, let me play you uh, a recording of a different loon. The structure, as you can tell, is very much the same. There's an introduction, and in this case, only two repeat syllables. Uh, but if we make a sound spectrogram of this, you can see that there now are uh, some uh, differences. And if we measure uh, this duration here to here, and this gap from, uh, between the introduction and the first repeat syllable, the frequency of this note and the frequency of this note we would see that that was very different uh, than uh, the yodel I played you uh, just a moment before. So it turns out that every loon, every male loon, since it's only the male loons that yodel, that every male loon has its own characteristic yodel. But the great surprise was when we found a loon that changed territories, a male loon uh, that was displaced from one territory and moved on to another. Under those circumstances, to our astonishment, the loon changed 
uh, its yodel. And let me try and show that for you now. This is a recording of J. Poole Loon at the Sydney National Wildlife Refuge in 1998. And in 1999, this loon moved uh, to another pool. And uh, here is a recording uh, from 1999. It's hard to tell the difference just by listening, but if you do the measurements, you find that this that, that differs greatly in the pitch and in the timing of the uh, various elements. And by making these measurements, we have been able to find that loons, male loons that change territory, change their yodels. And it isn't just changing at random. It turns out that what they are doing is changing their yodel to be as different as possible than the previous resident of the territory they're now occupying. So you could imagine uh, that they might be imitating the previous resident, but no, for some reason, it's very important for them to say, new boy on the block, as it were, or new loon on the lake, to be more precise. And exactly why that is, uh, we still don't really know. And that's one of the questions uh, we're trying to resolve. So what I would like to emphasize is that there is a lot of complexity uh, in these vocalizations and quite a lot of information being communicated. Right now what I think is being communicated by the yodel are three things. Uh, first of all, what I think the yodel is communicating is something about the identity of the individual male giving the yodel. Um, that is, it's indicating that I am Bob or I am Ted or I am the resident loon of this particular territory. Uh, I also believe that the yodel is communicating something about the relative fighting ability or strength of the bird. That is, how big the individual is, is and therefore what type of a physical struggle that an intruder might be uh, uh, looking at as a, um, a potential threat. Lastly, I think the yodel is also communicating something about the aggressive motivation or willingness to defend that territory. Uh, that is, how agitated they are and how willing they are to try to displace any type of intruder. Vamos a